All right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A196 PLL, or also known as the Phase Locked Loop Module, positioned right here in about the center of our screen here. Um, we're going to be kind of talking basics this time around, as I like to do. Um, and then in some of the future video segments, we'll be doing some audio demonstrations as well as some possibly oscilloscope views uh, to kind of get a better understanding about what this module does. Um, it's quite different than anything that we've looked at in the past. Uh, for the most part, we've been looking at sort of sound generators, uh, filters, uh, utility modules, uh, CV sources, that kind of thing. Uh, this one kind of combines a couple of those modules and kind of meshes them into one module known as the phase lock loop. Um, there's three very distinct sections of this module, and uh, we're going to kind of go into each one of these different sections here as we're moving along um, through this basic section. Um, the top section, of course, is going to be our VCO section. The middle section is our phase comparator, and then the lower section is our low-pass filter. So these three are going to be used in conjunction to create one circuit known as the phase lock loop. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into our basic segment and uh, do a little bit of exploring in this module. Um, in the top section, our VCO section up here, um, the first thing you'll notice is it's got a waveform output right here, as well as a CV in right there. Uh, but the output is going to actually output a rectangle waveform. Now, uh, if you consult the manual, you can see that the uh, frequency range of this output is going to be between 2 hertz and 100 kilohertz. Now, that's overall frequency range. Um, it has three range uh, areas that you can set it to. Over here on the left-hand side, you have the low range or sub audio. And then in the center, you have the high range or audio range. And then over on the right, you have the mid range. So kind of middle frequencies right there in the module. Um, and for the most part, that part is pretty straightforward. It's very similar to what you would have on a uh, VCO or even some of the audio rate LFOs that you've seen in the Dofer system. Uh, the output of this particular section here is actually normaled to the phase comparator input right below here. So that means that when nothing is plugged into this input here, that this output is going to automatically be feeding into the phase comparator section. Um, and it will be used as part of this kind of phase comparator section here. But we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Uh, you can see that indicated, actually, if you look pretty closely at uh, the module here, there's an arrow pointing straight down from the output right here, going right down into input number one right here in our phase comparator section. So there you go. Uh, the offset control up here in the top section is going to allow us to control the maximum frequency of our VCO. This is kind of still going to allow us to set the range, but this is going to allow us to adjust the maximum frequency of that range that we set it to. The CV input up here at the top is going to accept between 0 and plus 5 volts, so primarily only positive voltages at this CV input right here. And uh, if no CV is actually input from here, then the control voltage is actually going to be coming from the low-pass filter at the bottom, as indicated by this arrow here that sort of emits out from the output of the low-pass, goes up, and then points right to the CV input right there. So that's meant to kind of illustrate that point right there. And so for the most part, that's going to actually take care of our VCO section up here. Pretty straightforward for the most part. Now, we're going into the phase comparator section. This one's a little bit more uh, detailed and sort of expansive here as we're moving along 
Um, as we said before, input number one is actually hardwired from the output of our rectangle VCO here at the top. Uh, in some cases, if you want to, you can actually pipe an external waveform here. And if you do, then the top section will then be kind of broken and will no longer go into the phase comparator. Uh, but what I was going to say about this is that input number one is always going to be the waveform that is going to be doing the locking, if that makes sense. Um, it's going to be locking its phase, so whether it's the rectangle wave or let's say another output like a triangle wave or something like that. It's going to be locking its phase to the signal that's input here at input number two. So when we get a little bit further into some of the audio demonstrations and uh, maybe some of the oscilloscope views, uh, we'll get a little bit better of an understanding about what exactly is happening at that point. Uh, but for now, let's just know that input number one, for the most part, is going to be locking to another signal or some kind of external signal uh, coming in here at signal in, uh, labeled number two. Now, right above in the top section of this phase comparator, it's a little bit dense right here, but uh, there's a little LED right here. And when that lights up, that's going to indicate to you that it is locking to face. So the behavior or the style or you know the results that you'll get from the locking accuracy or however you want to kind of understand it or kind of explain it um, is going to be adjusted by the three types of phase comparators here. You have one, two, and three labeled right there. Now if you look in the manual, it goes into a little bit more detail about what they're actually called. And I'll go ahead and name them, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what each type of comparator actually does, um, other than to mention that each one of these three modes is going to actually give us a different timbral result as we're feeding different sound sources into this circuit. Uh, mode number one over on the left is going to be the exclusive or gate, also known as the XOR uh, phase comparator. Number two in the center is going to be the RS flip-flop phase comparator. And then number three in the manual is labeled as a more complex digital network comparator. So there you go. As we're moving along, just kind of know that as a reference or if you want to pull out the manual and check it out as we're flipping through modes. Uh, I invite you to do so. So why would you use one over another? Um, as much as I could get of an explanation of that particular thing in the manual, um, one thing it kind of stated was there is a fair amount of experimentation that is going to go into using uh, the phase lock loop circuit to get interesting and uh, kind of uh, varied results if you want to think of it that way. In the manual, it states that phase comparator number one is going to lock at our even harmonics of whatever signal is being fed into here. Uh, and then again is the exclusive or the gate or XOR uh, phase comparator. And so that particular type of behavior where it's locking at only the even harmonics is going to exhibit one type of accuracy as well as timbral results that come out of the, of the phase comparator. Now, um, as we move through some of these other modes, uh, which I have done a little bit of experimenting with, uh, you will begin to hear a little bit more of the type of differences and even some uh, varied differences from the actual locking behavior that will be exhibited from each one, some more accurate than others. Uh, but in the manual, it actually just says that the way to sort of approach this is to kind of experiment and kind of tailor it to whatever the sound source is that you're feeding into it. So a good amount of experimentation, but that's kind of what it's all about. At any rate, that kind of discusses our three little inputs here. Um, let's see, the only other thing I wanted to mention here is 
our output here of our phase comparator section is actually hardwired to the low pass filter as noted by this arrow right here. It says it's going straight down into the bottom section of our low pass filter. But right here at this point, it could be patched out to another external filter if you chose to do so, or also to a slew limiter. It does recommend uh, in the manual that if you're going to use it for that purpose, that either the filter or the slew limiter be DC coupled to accept that signal, um, unless you're actually trying for a special type of effect, then by all means, feel free to uh, use a audio uh, filter for sending your signal out from your phase comparator here. Uh, but at any rate, that actually kind of knocks out, I think, a good deal of the phase comparator section. Um, I know that was kind of very functionally dense and we got quite a bit of uh, material right there. But again, since this is a video, you can always back it up and then watch it again and again uh, if you choose to do so. So that brings us essentially down to the bottom section here, our low pass filter section. Uh, the filter frequency is going to be controlled by the CV in that is actually right up here, or it can be manually adjusted. So you can, you know, bring up, cut off of the frequency, or bring down, cut off of the frequency. And again, as we stated before, the output of the filter right here, in general, is going to feed up into this port if there is no CV piped into there. So just keep that in mind as we're kind of moving along. Um, and that, for the most part, is going to conclude our little discussion of the phase lock loop basics. Um, and some of the segments that are going to follow, uh, we're going to be kind of doing a little bit of experimenting with the phase lock loop with some different types of sound sources. Uh, I have a few different plans for some patches that I'd like to execute uh, from some materials that I found online uh, from other users out there of the A196. So we'll be integrating those and giving some shout outs to those folks. Uh, so please stay tuned. Uh, I hope the following videos are going to be uh, fairly interesting and something a little bit diverse and different than what we've done before. So um, again, thanks for watching this time and please stay tuned.